We need some basic electricity this week, and the next three weeks we will do some mechanical work. I want to develop some skills, so when you go in the field, you'll have some idea of how these things work, and you'll feel more comfortable. But for all of us know how to how the car works. All of us know there's an engine, there's a transmission, and you look at it, you know where everything is. But you don't feel comfortable taking it apart because you never did it before, right? So once you do it once or twice, probably you'll feel more comfortable, and you feel more inclined to go and do some more. So we did that one component last week, which was the transformer. We tested a transformer, and something you can do outside the burner. Uh, this week, we will test an oil pump. I'll show you what it does it look like, what does it do, how do you test it, how do you know if it's functioning properly or not. That's this week. This week, we will, huh? Okay. Uh, for the oil pump, I need you to have, I have some lab coats, so please put some lab coats in case you get sprayed. Poss possibility you this spray is very high. And uh, it's good to do it here, so you'll be very aware. Uh, the pump pressure is very high, it's around 150 psi. So if, it's, if the flare joint is not tight enough, it's probably it's going to leak. And if there's a leak from the flare joint, what are you gonna do? Cut a green flare. If the oil line is not aligned correctly, it's not going to seal very tight. So goggles are important, gloves, like these gloves, and wear a lab coat. And the diesel smell is very strong, Itching your clothes really hard to get out, and you don't want the uh, diesel to be in your skin. It absorbs your skin, it's bad for you, it causes some nerve damage. Uh, yeah, that's something you have to be very aware of. So we'll be very careful. So we'll do, this week we'll do pump testing. Next week we'll do something simpler, which is uh, how do you set the electrodes. Uh, that is something can be done easily, but the first time it looks very intimidating. So I'll have you set up the electrodes and see that they work properly. Uh, one more lap, we will take apart the entire burner of the Trinity Desert game. And I think that will give you a lot of confidence in knowing all the components. By then we know all the components. Uh, we'll take the motor out and test it. That will be another way to test the motor. So we'll do the motor, we'll do the nozzle, uh, the placement and setting the electrodes. We'll do the pump. And if we have more time and if you guys are motivated, I will do wiring. We'll do wiring. Oh. But, uh, we'll keep it. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me finish. We'll wire the primary control responsible for turning on the motor and the ignition. Okay? So this week, it's the pump. The pump is very important to know how to do it properly. Why? I just said. What do you think? The pump is very important. Huh? It's important because it's going to pump the oil inside, but also because it's high pressure and it's a <coughs> contamination product. So that's something you don't want to leak. And the high pressure is going to pump a lot of water, a lot of uh, diesel. And again, anything more than three gallons of diesel leak into a basement, that's an EPA issue. <coughs> it's a very big deal. That's a lot. Yeah. So if you have a leak, that's very important. You want to know that this pump for sure is not leaking. And uh, doing the bleeding and purging is very important. If, the, if there is some air in the line, probably there will be some leaks. Uh, probably the pump is not going to work if you try. So it's, it's good to know it. And it can be a little bit intimidating because the, the system is running and you have to do it while the system is running. So I'm going to have you individually test the pump one by one. I want to make sure you do it correctly. And if you feel still uncomfortable, please just do it again. Uh, I have some basic information about pumps. <coughs> Hopefully we can remember some of these. So there's a difference between a pump and a circulator. A pump, they both add pressure. They both, the term used is, uh, is used uh, interchangeably. But the pump has the ability to, to pull oil or product from just from a height. It has more more uh, suction power. So you always hear for some pump and another sub circulator. The circulator probably is a small device that just pushes the water around and doesn't have, have no ability to pull water over elevation. Uh, it increases the pressure, both of them. The pump actually can create a vacuum and be self-priming. 
I said to her, can I do that? It has to be the same level. Because liquid usually is very heavy. Not very heavy, but it is heavy. What is the weight of uh, water, one gallon of water? Eight pounds. Diesel, uh, seven pounds, so it's pretty heavy. So to pull eight pounds using a pump, it's very difficult sometimes. Uh, the, the important key is the pressure. The pressure is the velocity square times the area times the density of the product. So how much pressure we add to the, the product. So if you look at the density and the area and the velocity you want to add to it, this is going to be your pressure. And what is your pressure? I will talk about that more next semester when we talk about pumps. So if, the, if you have a pipe that is a quarter of an inch, the longer the pipe, the more vertical it is, the more weight you have to pull in, into it. Does it make sense? Mass is always constant, flow, fluid in, fluid out. What, what do I mean by that? That's the conservation of mass. If you spill something out, something has to displace it. If there's a leak in the pipe, what's going to get in? You're gonna pull in some, you're gonna pull out, or like draw out some air? Uh, some, yeah, you're gonna pull some fluid, you're gonna get some air in. There has to be some, otherwise, what would be there? What would be there? If there is no, if there is no air coming in, you have a lot of suction, nothing coming, coming in. What are you gonna have? <coughs> Vacuum. Vacuum. Vacuum pressure is 14.7 psi. That's the vacuum. After that, there'll be nothing. There'll be rupture. Uh, air bubbles is another issue that you'll have in a pump. You don't want to have any air bubbles because that will clog your nozzle and probably will prevent the flow from going in. We'll have a vacuum if there's if we're pulling in, and we want to estimate how much vacuum do we have based on the pump. Uh, pump driving is uh, essential. For the same reason, because the pump is designed to pump liquid. <coughs> it's not designed to pump air. What's uh, a device that pumps air? Air pump. Yeah. <laughs> but what is it called? Fan. What else? Blower. What else? Compressor. Compressor. I was looking for compressor, but there you are, right? Air pump, which is a compressor, another name for a compressor. Uh, a fan does pull in some air, but does not add any pressure. A lot of, uh, uh, actually, maybe it does, but not too, not too much. As as you add more pressure, you're gonna be having a compressor. So a compressor and a pump operate in the same way. What would you think is the difference between a compressor and a pump? The way the valves are facing. Huh? The way the valves are facing. Sorry, what else? They can be both automatic and manual. A, a compressor has more seal, so the air does not. Yeah get through, air can go through easier than liquid. So depending on the product, you have to account for that. <coughs> what is the difference between liquid and uh, gas? Okay. Huh? Okay, what else? What else? Huh? Okay. So can you compress gas? That's the whole science based on compressing gas. So if you put out a syringe, you push on it, there's it's compressing gas. Can you compress liquid? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you can. It's hard. No. No. <laughs> you can't compress liquid. A liquid is going to stay the same volume. No matter how much pressure you put on it, it's still, it's still going to be the same volume. Gas? No, you can't compress gas until it's compressed. But um, in a cylinder, isn't it? Liquid, yeah, but you're having you're adding pressure by compressing gas on top of the liquid. However, the liquid will not compress. That's why they have something called compressible fluid, which is liquid, and a compressible fluid, which is gas, and incompressible fluid, which is liquid. So think about that. You can never compress liquid. That's why in your refrigeration course, probably you went through something called. Uh, Separator for the compressor over there to make sure that there is no liquid going into the compressor. That will break the compressor. Compressor is operated based on the principle that gases can change volume. Can liquid change volume? No. It's going to be the same volume. You can add pressure to it, but it's not going to compress. 
So when it comes to pump priming, pump is, is designated to pump water, I mean to pump liquids, not gases. So if there is no liquid, it's not going to pump anything. Some pumps need to be primed. I don't know if you remember back in the days they had pumps and they have a little hole where you have to fill in the hole first before it runs. That's called priming, which means the line has to have some kind of liquid. So let's look at a pump here. Let's assume this is a pump. We have a line. This is the liquid. The pump cannot, what's, what's in here? Air. We have oil. Let's say oil. The pump is pushing, but there is nothing but air and air getting compressed. It's going to be compressed based on the pump performance. Eventually, nothing will happen. So, what do you do in some, in some cases? There is a small little reservoir here that you put in some liquid until you fill the entire cavity and the pump will start running. Probably if you move with cars, there's some, you have to do some kind of priming. Some pumps are able to, to prime itself within small distance. So you'll see the water rising a little bit, but, or the fluid rising a little bit, but not too much, so you need to prime the pump. That's what it is meant by pump. Prime. So pump is designed to pull in liquid, not air, <coughs> and if the, there is air in the line, it's not going to go through. We understand that sometimes the oil line gets leaky, drink some oil, there's air inside, and the pump is not pumping diesel anymore or oil. So you have to prime it, and you can't break that. And depending on how, and usually, if you notice in a lot of oil burners, you have the tank, in here, the same level as the burn. So we use gravity, so the whole thing would not. Be empty. So the, the, the oil at this level will always have more pressure, so you do need to do priming. Otherwise, if you pull it from the bottom, probably it would not, it would not happen. So you always keep the, the diesel tank at the same level as the burner, that is the reason because those pumps are not designed to self fly They can pull from about one foot maybe or something, but that's that's probably it. Um, you'll see this in action as well. So the pump impeller, the impeller of a pump is uh, sophisticated, has more pulling power, and can create some vacuum, and that's the difference between a pump and a circulator. If you look at circulator, this is the impeller, and if you look at it, it does not look the same. It just pushes the liquid around in the casing and creates some pressure. A pump has the ability to create negative pressure. <coughs> Parts of the pump, a motor, something has to provide the centrifugal force, circular force. That's the motor. Coupling, what does the coupling do? Coupling. Connects two things together. Thank you. It connects the motor to the pump. Otherwise, the pump is useless, not running. It brings the water together? Huh? It the motor and the water. It connects the motor and the pump. <coughs> and the fan? Some pumps have fans. Why? To cool the motor and the pump. Because it provides, because, it, uh, because there's a lot of friction going on. We have a ra uh, rotor and stator similar to a motor. Is that the, huh? is that in the motor? Say again? Is that in the motor? Yeah. And some pumps have their own cooler. Yeah. 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 So is the, the pump. There's a rotor and stator in the, in the pump. What is the rotor in this area? Is the pillar and stator is the case. Pump and motor analogy. So there's always, if you want to make a big picture, this is my pump. There's a coupling. And here is the motor. This is the coupling. So, what is the RPM of the pump? Is it going to run the same way as the motor? 
like if you have a gear, if there's no gear, if it's, if it's a straight coupling, it's going to be the same RPM. So the RPM of the motor equals the RPM of the pump. Unless you have a gear or a belt, it should be the same RPM. So this is our rotor stator. To a pump. And this is an oil pump that you will have in all, most oil burners. Let's look at, let's take a closer look. Does this look familiar? This is your oil line that you're going to make underneath the, the pump. <coughs> and this is your flare joint, the flare mat, going into the pump. If we want to look closer to a residential burner oil pump, there is many out sometimes two, sometimes three, depending on the design. You have a lot of the specs in here. This one has a three gallon per hour pumping power at 100 PSI. And if you look at the pressure, it has 100 to 150 PSI, depending on the manufacturer design. And there's a flat head screw adjustment here that will increase or decrease the pressure. How does it do that? It's just a pin that goes in and out and adjusts the the area, the flow. Smaller area, high pressure. Bigger area, low pressure. So it's like, it's like you putting your finger on the garden hose and increasing the pressure. And it goes further, letting go, and the pressure gets smaller. So I, there's a quad for the RPM, 3,400 and something. And if you increase the pressure from 150 to 250, you're gonna get less flow. Next set, when you put your finger on the garden hose and it becomes really high pressure and it goes further, you have less flow. More flow, more air. Uh, this is our Pershing outlet. So if we have some air in the line, some bubbles, you're gonna put a hose in here and loosen it up until you start to have some flow. And you have to see it to believe it. And one of the issues you might have if the flow drum is going to be very fast and you want to have continuous stream of oil. What, what color is diesel oil? It's like a pink. something different. It's cranberry color. It's like cranberry juice. So if it's pink, you have a lot of bubbles in it. You want continuous color, continuous stream. Do not, if you open this really quickly, and the rep comes out, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get sprayed, so it's difficult to put it back. So make sure you open it slowly, and you have a bucket or something underneath. Uh, two turns is enough until you see it. If it comes out, you just turn off the system, and start again. Do not panic. Uh, we have outlets. Here you can put your pressure gauge. So you can see what is the pump pressure, and you can adjust the pressure based on the manufacturer. Well, uh, we'll do it practically. Talking about it again, we'll have some information sync, but unless you do it, it's really hard to, to kind of have it sink in. This is our pressure gauge. Even though they work with a split phase motor, high startup torque. You don't worry about this now, but uh, it's mostly for the motor. The motor will just provide the RPM, and we have our pressure. We connect our pressure gauge into the into the pump, and make sure it's within specification. That's 100 to 150 psi, and I want you to go up and down and play with it so you can get a feel for how it works. Uh, this is the, uh, the the setup we're gonna have in the shop. I have a better setup this time. I have it on a cart, and we're gonna have two oil lines. And if you notice here, I put the the oil coming from up high, so it will flow to the bottom. And it's going to be my purging line. And I put a clear tool within, just so you can see it. But it's not going to be the case in, the, in real life. Because it's going to be completely solid, solid tool. And uh, this line, this hole is going to connect the outlet. And you open it a little bit until it flows. And you connect also your, your nozzle. Uh, it looks a little bit overwhelming, because it is. But we'll do it one on one. 
eight of us will take turns and we'll make sure we get the turn. And if you want to come back again and do it, stay in the back, back of the line and come back again and do it. Uh, people charge a lot of money just to freaking raise your phone. Because somebody has to go there and do it physically. So it's uh, it's essential to know how to play the pump. It's very simple, but it's also very intimidating at the same time. So we'll look at that. We'll check for leaks. We don't want leaks. You don't want bubbles. Pershing. We have an engine with the Pershing uh, outlet. Check for the pressure and PSI. Pressure stability. Ah, uh -huh. this is something else we have, we have to talk about. We'll do it again. So the pump is providing pressure for the oil. Once you stop the pump, the pressure should drop by 15%. Once you turn the pump off, the pressure should be drop by 50%, then it stays at that number. So if I have 100 pressure when the, when the pump is on, what is the pressure if the pump is off? 85. And it should stay there. If it drops, what does that mean? That pump, leak, air bubble, expansion. Uh, check for noise, should be noisy, should be humming constant, uh, in a constant way. If you have a lot of rattle inside, something is wrong. This is uh, YouTube from the, the Great Raiders guy. I recommend this guy for most of my videos, he's really awesome. Uh, you, you can watch it on your own, but we'll, we'll do that. We'll, uh, on Thursday. Yeah, thank you.